Hello, everybody. My name is Ernie Gonzalez, San Jose State football beat writer with the Spear. I'm Jose Trujillo, staff writer with the Spear. And uh, we're here to do the first uh, Spear hot take for San Jose State football inside SFQ Stadium right away, right off the bat. You know, what, what do you see in this team, Jose, uh, tomorrow and, you know, for the rest of the season? Well, specifically for tomorrow, I'm really hoping that we can see a team that's smashed and that's all on the same page. And that just means everyone from the coaching staff down to the quarterbacks to the O-line to, to every position. I would want them to be on the same page and show that they can compete. And it's it's a FCS uh, school. It's a, it's a division. It's a school that's a little lower than you. So they should be able to come out and show a lot of positive signs tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Um, something you mentioned, competing. You know, last season, 2-11, uh, you know, the team wasn't very that sorry to use it but competitive you know they got blown out by teams like utah state like unlv san diego state which you know a lot of people don't see them winning but at least see them competing that's yeah, that's compete. a key word here so um you know if, if they can string together some you know games where they you know if they fall you know 27 24 you know they fall 28 21 at least they show that they were you know the game. toe to toe with them yes and, and it's, it's going to be disappointing if you got if you get a season as you know like last where it's like 61 tens and you know, 52 14s, you know, that's, that's not going to make a lot of sense. Talk about that offense, speaking of trending upwards. That's, is that the only way they can go right now? I honestly, yeah, because it was really that bad last season that I believe they could only go up. Uh, so many turnovers, time of possession was bad. Um, they just, everything about the offense was really ugly. And I'm hoping this year when McGivens and the old, co the old coordinator, they could come in and maybe install a system that. That is maybe not as up tempo, and that the players can get right away, and hopefully they can, like I said, first and foremost, limit those turnovers because they were killer last year. Yeah, yeah. Let's actually jump on that. You know, um, what happens when, you know, the team keeps turning the ball over, keeps turning the ball over, and Brennan all last year, every press conference, what was the take out of the game? What was the take out of the, of the previous game? Well, you know, we turned the ball over too much. Happened time and time and week and week again, and you know what happens is, you know, the teams kind of ego just kind of disappears you know and and you don't really want that when you know you got two pack two pack 12 schools very soon you got uh you know the whole mountain west very jam-packed colorado state unlv san diego state fresno state nevada got navy yeah uh, army actually army on, on, on uh, october 13th levi stadium but you know you you kind of have a lot of teams that are hungry to turn the or to, 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 to you know take away the ball and if you're that one team in the conference that everybody looks at you like, you know, hey, they're they're easy to take the ball away from. You know, it doesn't matter if you're home or, home or away. You know, you're gonna have a hard time, and it's gonna just, you know. And that also feel helps bad. the defense. You know, yeah. transitioning into talking about the defense, the we know how how bad the defense was last year, specifically the run defense. So now, if the offense can stay on the field, create longer drives, not turn the ball over, or go three and out, and get get the defense back on the field, it's really gonna help gonna help the team overall something buzzing around the team right now obviously the whole quarterback situation huge news broke last night about uh terrell carter the red shirt supposed to be red shirt freshman um of course he redshirted last season he never got playing time but he announced on twitter that he is going to reopen his recruitment and uh you know he, he thanks san jose state for you know everything it, you know life lessons uh the coaching staff but uh from what i'm gathering as insider is that he actually is pointing the finger at the coaching staff again not a lot of details um he did say it wasn't really his decision as much as what it was a coaching staff so we'll keep you guys updated on that but going back to the quarterback situation uh jose who do you see starting tomorrow uh to, who i see starting tomorrow and i hope for the rest of the season is montel aaron i believe this he gives the spartans the best chance to go out there and put some points on the board and montel aaron montel aaron okay yeah i i believe so man i think he's the most athletic QB, I think he can make the most plays, and I think he keeps the defenses uh, on their toes more than any other quarterback on this roster. So I really, I expect him to come out tomorrow, show command of the offense, show that he's gonna show some consistency, and you know, and that's within drives, you know, throw three, four passes, you know, complete them, and they don't have to be, you know, over the world throws. Just get them where they need to be and sustain, sustain drives, and I believe he he will do that. I think. I think you lean that route because the whole dual threat, you know, the fact that he yeah. can, you know, extend a play whenever needed, but he's a red shirt sophomore. I'm going with Josh Love. Here's uh. why. It's all about leadership. It's all about experience. It's all about, 
you know, I, I'm, I'm more, you know, I, I stick to, you know, the prototypical way of doing things. Um, you know, I, I think Josh Love is a leader. I think, you know, seeing him out here in practice lately, um, he's just, he just looked more in control, more poised. Um, don't get me wrong, Montel, you know, the dude, the dude looks solid, uh, definitely taller, uh, can, you know, escape the pocket when needed. But I feel like if you have a fragile offensive line and, you know, very young as well, you know, and, and you got a lot of teams who are hungry for sacks, I feel like he's going to be almost Cam Newton-like, you know, like he, 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 he shines when, when it's cool, but when he's not, it's, it's all on him, you know, because he's, he's, he's doing too much. I think Montel might be, might be doing too much at times. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go with Josh Love. The reason why, you know, home opener last season against USF, number 19 came into town, into, into Seth Q Stadium. And what did you get that first drive? You got, you know, straight down the field, six points. You know, and actually 16-0 after the first quarter. Yes, they lost a game, uh, 40, was it 42, 20? I don't yeah. remember the score. No. But uh, it wasn't that close after that, but it was 16-0, you know, to start the season. Got the whole fans out here like, whoa, you know, San Jose State actually is gonna compete this season, but we all, know, we all understand how last year turned out. But Josh Love mainly because, again, he can lead the team. He can build that momentum. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be close. You know, it's gonna be Brandon's call, that, just like it was last season. You know, come, come, you know, four o'clock last season, seven o'clock this season with that home opener, and um, you know, whatever decision he makes is gonna be interesting. Oh, man, hey, Josh Love, he couldn't. He had, he was at the, he was at the helm last year. He had the, he had the keys to the car, and he couldn't really, he couldn't, he couldn't drive him past the second game, man. By the second game, we seen <laughs> Montel Aaron stepping in. So that's the only reason I don't have confidence in just love he had he had the spot last year he was a starter game one and he couldn't really even make it a game two well, well we'll see jose we'll see you know who it is and who brandon elects um how about the defense what do you see um you know secondary a lot of changes linebacking a lot of linebackers a lot of changes what, what do you see out of the defense this year what do you think they can do uh i I believe they're going to be very improved. I think they're, they'll be more improved. Yeah, I think okay. they're going to be improved. Yeah, I think they're going to be improved uh, specifically against the run. Uh, I think with the last year, Ethan Nguayo, I don't know if you remember, he was actually right there with Frank Game. The when he was playing, they were they were a really good tandem, and he was right there neck and neck with tackles. Um, you also have Bridges. You know, you got Boogie. You got Saleli. So. Uh, um, so you got these guys that have experience. You got upperclassmen there, and I believe that they're gonna, they'll be able to, to at least not get ran over for 500 yards, 300 yards every other game, and I think that's gonna be one improvement. The secondary, they did lose some players. You lost a lot of upperclassmen with a lot of experience, and uh, that might be a little different story. Okay. Um, yeah, I see. I actually see the secondary not doing. You know, not living up to that money team standard that, that they have been, you know, DBU lately. Um, you know, you, you lose Maurice McKnight, who's maybe not a vocal leader, but, you know, he, he proves it in, in, you know, whatever he's doing uh, on and off the field. Very good kid. Andre Chachere, you know, who had a spectacular junior season. A little fall off his senior year, but he still is a very decent player for San Jose State. Always talking about him. Uh, then you got Jermaine Kelly, who was drafted you know, 222nd overall. Uh, in the seventh round by the Houston Texans, and then you have you know a couple a couple more pieces back there, and then you have the DB coach Eric Williams from Los Angeles, but he's still getting to know the, the flow of things, the flow of the defense. Uh, Derek Odom, you know, correlating a lot with him, but I just feel like you know the Mountain West right now, they they they're known for, for, for running backs and wide receivers, and you have a secondary. Obviously, they're not going to be the main tacklers, but that that's more so the linebackers, the O line, but. You have a secondary that's young. You know, you have the, the, the Trey White, Trey Webb. Um, who else is back there? You also got Dakari Monroe, who I think is that CEO of that money team right now. You know, he's the leader out there, but it's him and almost, in my opinion, no one else with experience. Uh, Brandon Ezell, maybe, but it's, it's it's it comes down to experience in my eyes, and, and I, I just don't feel like they're gonna make that jump to where it's like, okay, they're back to that, you know, DBU. Um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's where I see them right now. Uh, special teams, let's talk about special teams. Um, I think they'll be, I think they'll still be good. Maybe not as quite last year. I mean, Carrizoza, he's gone and he was a, he was, he would pin teams back deep, man. That was a big time weapon that the Spartans actually had last year. Uh, that was actually probably the one position that other teams that were feared was like, hey, we could get pinned back at the five, at the six, you know, inside the 15. Crawford, Bryce Crawford, we also had him. He, 
he kicked a lot of field goals, made a lot of field goals. He's made a lot of field goals since he's got at San Jose State. So now I'm hoping he's also going to take over the punting duties. So now I'm hoping that the, the special team is something that San Jose State was really, really known for. Hopefully it can continue. Yeah, one thing we know for sure, Jose, is that no matter what the Spartans do, uh, they're not going to have Michael Carrizoza back. Uh, they're not going to have the same punting game back. Uh, he was out, out here for Pro Day, you know, back in March. Uh, the dude got signed. He's, he's probably gonna gonna be in the NFL sometime soon. But as for the Spartans, what they're left with is is mainly Bryce Crawford. I'm not sure if he's gonna be double, doing double dipping with you know punting and field goals. But in terms of special teams, I mean that's probably one of the strengths this team has right now. Uh, probably can't finish, but you know for six, but can't finish for three. Um, and that's gonna, that that means that they gotta rely on their defense. If, they, if that defense doesn't grow. That's where that kind of shakes things up. All right, let's jump to predictions. Jose, what do you see this team doing tomorrow and for the rest of the season? Uh, tomorrow, you know, like I do see them having a convincing win. Convincing and, win? What do you mean by that? Uh, 14, 17 point win, 16 point win. I, uh, it's a big Sky Conference school. The Spartans beat one of their fellow members in Cal Poly last season. So why, why not be able to beat them at home? The season opener, a lot of momentum. Um, you're probably gonna have the biggest crowd of the season more than likely so yeah the Spartans should come out with a lot of fire and I expect them to win about 26 10 something like that I could I could see them scoring a lot getting a lot of field goals and uh, hopefully they can show that they sustain some some offensive drives and on the defensive side they can stop some some of uh, the threats that UC Davis uh, uh, brings yeah I gosh I mean talk about energy and you talk about the fans you know it's probably gonna be the like like you said probably the most packed game tomorrow probably homecoming maybe more uh fresno state who knows but yeah against uc davis it's probably the for me it's only it's the only game on the schedule that i see them that i i go okay that, that that's a win but i feel like it's it's gonna be a win not like yours not convincing it's gonna be like they're barely gonna squeak it out like i see them winning Spartans winning 30 to 24, 30 to 26, somewhere along those lines. Here's why a lot of people forget who is on that UC Davis team. They have the leading receiver, the leading receiver of last season for FCS, obviously, but you know it's probably not known around the FBS. But Keelan Dolls, he lit it up, close to 2,000 yards that receiving just last season. Uh, the dude, the dude's insane. And then you got you know, the the Big Sky newcomer of the year, Jake Meyer, uh, Long Beach transfer. Uh, very, very you know, talented kid as well, and I think that the chemistry between them two, plus the youth factor with San Jose State, the San Jose State secondary, I think it, it, it can it can get deadly for San Jose State. You know, it can be like, well, damn, we got to fix things up. You know, especially back here on the secondary, it's going to be a wake up call for that secondary and Eric Williams, the new uh, uh, defensive backs coach. But I, I, I see UC Davis either keeping up with San Jose State. Maybe at one point meeting, you know, people forget seven to six at halftime last last season against Cal Poly, another FCS Big Sky school. So um, they have to come out with that intensity, similar to Week One that they had against uh, against against uh, UCF, the Bulls, and Quentin Flowers Week One of last of last season in order to kind of put the put the Aggies away right away. And if you know for whatever reason it's it's uh you know not it's, it's not in the Spartans' favor at halftime, they got to come up. You know, wake up and, and, and deal with the Aggies right away, third and fourth quarter. They got to pull out that victory because second, you know, second and third games of the season. Who do you play? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. only gonna get tougher. They're yeah. gonna take a trip, not a far trip, but a trip up north to Washington. They're gonna go to face Washington State. Their high tempo offense. You got Mike Leach. Then you got they're gonna travel to Eugene, Oregon, University of Ducks. You know what they bring? Their speed, their up tempo game. Uh, so. This is going to be their game for them to come out and show show to everyone, Spartan Nation, and even people in the Mountain West that you know what they're they're going to be able to to put some things together and maybe not be run over as easy as they were last season. Yeah, yeah, you got the rest of the Mountain West, of course. Uh, Col you got Hawaii after that, Colorado State, um, UNLV a couple games after Nevada. Um, so San Diego State, Fresno State, as always. So uh, it's going to be a, an interesting mix, especially these first three weeks. But uh, yeah, it's going to do it for us. Hopefully, you know, if you Spartan fans are out there or Spartan players are out there hearing us, go prove us wrong. That's been the mantra all year. So uh, go prove it. Good luck this season.